Good, good, good morning and welcome. I'm excited you're here for another day in our Ship of Experience. So, what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Today is day 12. Day 1, 2. Thank you for making it to day 12 of this Ship of Experience. And our topic today is overcoming plateaus. <laughs> we'll get to know what plateaus are and how it affects us and how to overcome them. Hello, my name is Ngo and I am your guide in this Ship of Experience. I hope you're having fun. Okay, welcome to day 12. If you've been sticking to your plan but not seeing changes, don't worry. You might be hitting what is known as a plateau. We all have been there. You are doing everything right, but the skill wouldn't budge. You still have the same results or even higher results on the scale. It happens to me. And it has even happened to me in this experience. Or you are not seeing changes in your body. Your clothes are still too tight at the tummy. Your sleeves are too tight or elsewhere. It's frustrating and it's disheartening. But guess what? You, my friend, can overcome plateaus. Why do plateaus happen? First, our bodies are incredibly efficient machines. They are incredibly efficient. That's what your body is. When you do the same activities and eat the same foods your body learns how to do that using the least amount of energy hey, let me say it again when you do the same activities and eat the same food your body learns how to cope using the least amount of energy which means same same old old activities will give you same, same results. Is it really a plateau? Secondly, before jumping to conclusions, make sure you are not sneaking in extra calories or slacking on your exercise routine. You remember when we discussed nutrition and calories? Calories can come in form of liquids. The energy drinks, the fizzy drinks, Coca-Colas that we drink, shop bought and packaged fruit juices, they all contain calories. So you may not be eating the wrong thing, but just drinking those liquids add up to your calorie intake. So if you're very sure you are not doing all those things and that you are exercising accordingly then you know there are things other things we have to look into sometimes we plateau because we are not as vigilant as we think you can see this lady screaming save our soul on the scale she felt she was doing the right thing she thought she was doing all she could but somehow the scale wasn't shifting which happens to everyone everyone so when it happens so long as you are keeping track recording your progress that's where the workbook comes in record your progress and if you see that the scale is not moving your clothes are not giving way around your tummy your sleeves are still tight then a few things can be changed and we'll go into those things that you can do to overcome plateaus. Plateaus are where you come to a standstill in your weight loss or weight management. You can no longer go down, you can no longer go up, you just, because your body has adapted to the quantity and type of food you have been given it. And they decide, no, 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 we are not living here. When you notice that, as soon as you notice you have hit a plateau where you are no longer dropping, 
then you have to shake up things. I'm going to give you three strategies to overcome a plateau. One, change up your exercise routine. What have you been doing? Only press-ups and plank. Maybe we need to shape things up. Maybe you need to take a run or a, a brisk walk once in a, in a week or in three days. If you've been doing the same workouts, switch it up. Add more weight, weightlifting to build muscles so that even when you sleep, your body will be burning fat, not calories. There are two different things. I'll talk about it. I'll try and record a video about the differences between burning calories and burning fat. What we want to do is to burn fat, not calories. When you lift weight or you do strength training exercises, your body burns fat even while you sleep. Add more weight, try any type of cardio or adjust the intensity. Maybe you're still doing the primary level. Step it up to the secondary level. Two, reevaluate your nutrition. Look at what you have been putting into your mouth. Again, have you been keeping your journal? Have you been writing every single thing that enters your mouth? If you have been vigilant, you may have seen the days you took extra of certain things or completely different kind of food that may have sneaked in extra calories. Are you still eating the same 1,500 calories that helped you lose the first 10 kilos? If you are, your body may need fewer calories now because now your body is used to it. You have lost 10 kilos and it has settled on that plateau, on that level. It will tell you, no, I'm not going anywhere. Your body is built to survive, to keep you alive with whatever you give it. So if you give it lots of food, it will survive. If you give it little food, it will still survive. So if you switch from giving it lots of food to very little food, it will wonder what you are doing. It will be suspicious of you and then it will be grabbing. No matter how small you eat, it will grab it and store as fat because it doesn't know when next you will give it food. That's why we preach consistency in your meal. You don't stay hungry. When you stay hungry, your body sees food and he grabs it and he stores it. Just like a small child that sees lots of cookies or chips. And the child will wonder, when next am I going to get this? I had better keep some aside for a rainy day. That's what the body does. It is an efficiently built machine. It is very intelligent. For you to work things naturally, you have to teach your body a right. Teach it that this is the new norm. And when you see that the new norm is no longer giving you results, you teach it another new norm. Your body may need fewer calories. You don't need to add or count calories. All you need to do is watch your body, listen to your body, and make adjustments. Three, consider other metrics. Sometimes the scale doesn't tell you the full story. If I say I am 90 kg, for example, what really makes up the 90 kg? That's why we advocate you use a smart scale, but it's not compulsory. If you have it at the back of your mind that the scale does not tell you the whole story, then it will make sense. I will show you an example in a few minutes. Are your clothes fitting better even when you're still weighing the same number of kilos but somehow you know that your skinny jeans have started locking on your waist thumbs up it means you are achieving some results when you put on your shirts and the sleeves are not tight about to tear thumbs up it means you're doing something good regardless of the number on the scale your body may be going through other changes that are more important than the numbers. I'll break it down later on. Is your endurance improving? Sometimes when you try walking up a flight of stairs, you see yourself panting. But 
in this experience, have you noticed that you walk upstairs without noticing? You can climb, you can stand for a longer period of time. You can take longer walks. You can run for more minutes. That is a good thing. Because as you your endurance level increases, it means you can take on more strenuous tasks. That's going to the secondary level. These are all signs of progress. Okay, activities for day 12. One, identify the issue. Find out if it really is a plateau. Not that you have been taking in more calories through drinking your favorites, energy drinks, sodas, or alcohol, because those add calories. Identify the issue. Take a good look at your routine. Is it your diet? Is it your exercise? Or something else that might be holding you back? Two, implement one change. Based on your self-assessment, implement one major change this week. Maybe the type of exercise, maybe a, a different kind of food. Maybe you start lifting weights if you never did. Or maybe you start pushing, do pull-ups and push-ups. Do something, create a change. Whether it's increasing your workout intensity or swimming out a meal, make that change. I use meal replacement protein powder shakes. If you're interested, let me know and I will get them for you. When you swap your meal, you are doing your body a good thing because all the junk you would have eaten in normal food has been simplified in a protein powder that you turn into a shake. You have all the nutrients without the calories. That's a good thing. Tell me if you want to do a good thing for your body. Three, document and share. Even if you don't feel like sharing, document your journey. Keep a food diary. Use the workbook. Keep track of this change and how it affects you. Share your experience in the group. If you are not shy, share your story because it could help someone else stuck in a plateau. Find out if you really are stuck in a plateau. That's the first assignment. Then if you are, change your food or change or increase the intensity of exercise. Do something that would change things up and your body would adjust. Our focus today is to get you ready to break through that plateau. I hope you have collected your workbook because that's where you record the things that are necessary and that's what would help you take care of your journaling. Now, to the interesting parts. Okay. I brought my results to show you my progress. Just before this experience, I checked my weight. As you can see, it was 78.1. As of today, after 12 days, it is 76.85. A few kilos have shifted. Most importantly, I want you to take a look at the metrics. The metrics, the body fats. Let me expand it so you see it well. When you weigh yourself, on a bathroom scale and you see 78.1, you wouldn't know what contributed to that figure. But with a smart scale, you will see where each metric comes from. As you can see from this, 
When I was 78.1, my body fat was 44.1%. But as of today, my body fat has reduced to 27.6%. What, what a huge decrease. That decrease is not directly translated to the number of kilos lost. That's why the scale does not tell you the full story. I have lost a lot of body fat, as you can see from the metrics, but not a lot of kilos, which means something else is in behind the scenes. If you look at my skeletal muscle, 32.6, but as of today, my skeletal muscle has increased to 42.2. So for what I lost in my body fat, I gained in my skeletal muscle. You can see my body water increased, my protein increased from 11.9 to 17%, which is huge. My metabolic age dropped from 57 to 54. Let me explain what metabolic age means. Your metabolic age is how your body feels, how old your body feels. 12 days ago, my body felt like a 57 year old person. Today, my body feels like a 54 year old person. When you see someone that is young, but sluggish, it means the body feels old. I hope you get the point. Your body feels a certain number of years and that's what decides the reaction it exhibits. That's what plays a very huge part in your ability to do certain things. If you're 40 and your body feels like a 60 year old, that means it would have slowed down your metabolism. That's another topic for another day. That means setting age related complications and issues would start setting in because that's how the body feels. Remember your body is intelligent. It is very smart. So if your body feels old, it will bring all the symptoms of aging to your physical body. And you wonder, why am I looking like this? Why am I feeling like this? It's because of the way the body feels. If your body feels you're 80, you will have gray hairs related to an 80 year old, but you're not 80 physically, but with physical activity and delete nutrition, you can bring down your metabolic age. When your body feels when you are 50 and your body feels you are 35, do you know what it means? It means your metabolism will be like a 35 year old. You will never become a best. That is the bottom line. So you can see the metrics here. My bone mass increased from 2.62 to 3.34. When I say that the scale does not tell you the whole story, this is an example. So if you do a, a smart scale, that is okay. So long as you are doing something, so long as you are taking steps in this experience, so long as you're doing the little activities, all these tiny things count. As you can see, in 12 days, I lost over 20% body fat, which is awesome. I feel better. I have more energy. And all these come with consistency i am here to support you when it comes to consistency all you need to do is reach out to say i need help with being accountable with doing the right thing at the right time and we'll take it up from there okay remember this quotes in your book the result you get from this experience is directly proportional your level of commitment. 
I shouldn't overflock this. In life, your results are directly proportional to your actions. And if you do the right thing, there's nothing that will stop your results from coming in. Positive results. I want to say thank you once more for being with me for day 12, for being with me this far. Thank you for being part of this experience. I appreciate you. I appreciate your precious time. Go do something. I want to see your results. I want to see your metrics. I want you to tell me that, oh, I've lost how many pant sizes. Mm. We'll pop a champagne for you. Have a lovely day and weekend ahead. All the best. Don't forget to be awesome. <laughs>